Hello everyone, my name is Harish. I'm a PhD student here at UConn and I'm with HKN here today to make this video using the technology called white uh, light board and we're really excited about it. So today I'm going to talk about a problem from systems analysis and more specifically I'm going to talk about a problem where we have a set of state space equations and we are going to deal with the problem of representing it in terms of a matrix equation and then from there we are going to use what is called Mason's rule in order to derive the transfer function of the system. Okay, so we are given a set of state space equations here. So these are my two states x1 and x2 and these are the state derivatives and I have an output equation which is y and in here my input is u. So this was given to us. So now the very next thing we have to do is write the state space representation or the state space equation in matrix form. So I'm going to write this as x1 dot and x2 dot in a vector and then I need a matrix and then again x1 times x2 plus over here I need another matrix which is called the input matrix and then the input u. So here I need to fill in these values. So as you can see just even before you start filling in values you can see the dimensions. So this is a 2 by 1. So obviously this is 2 by 1. I need a 2 by 2 matrix here so that I can just plug in the values and the linear combination will give me this vector. And here it should be 2 by 1 because I'm adding. I can only add matrices or vectors of the same dimension. So I'm going to go back to these equations and you can see x1 is being multiplied by minus 6 over 9. So I'm going to write minus 6 over 9 for x1. And then for x2, it has minus 2 over 9. And then in terms of the input, I have 1 over 9. So let's look at x2 dot. So as you can see, I'm simply just stacking equations one on top of the other. And that's just the matrix represent representation. So for x2 dot, in terms of x1, I have 2 over 3. In terms of x2, I have minus 1 over 3. And I don't have any input, as you can see which means x2 dots, x2 dot is not going to depend on the input directly. And also what it means is x2 dots evolution, x2's evolution is described by x2 dot, and then it's not going to depend on u, so I'm just going to simply plug in zero here, right? So I have the state space equation now. So this looks like the standard form. So this is your x dot vector, this is your A matrix, this is your x vector, this is your b matrix, and this is just u, your input, right? So this is the generic state space equation. So this is not complete yet. I need an output equation also in the matrix form, which will complete my state space representation. So in my case, I have a single output, just single output, which means it's just a scalar, one by one. I will have a C matrix times x, which is, I already know, x1, x2, plus du, which is an output matrix, in this case, u. So let's go back to this equation. I have 2 over 3 x1 plus 2 over 3 x2. So I'm going to simply plug in 2 over 3 x1, 2 over 3 x2. So now this already constitutes of my, uh, to my output. I don't really need input. So input is not directly affecting my output. So again, zero here. So this, let me mark here. This is the C matrix. This is the X state vector D matrix and then the input U. This is Y obviously. So these two together is called the state space equation or the state space representation of any given system. Okay. Now we have this. Now let's use what is called Mason's rule. Mason's rule. Why do we need to use this? We need to go back to a representation that's called transfer functions. So basically you can represent systems using state space equation, using signal flow graphs, and also using transfer functions. So there are many ways to represent this. So first of all, Mason's rule, what it does is it converts your signal flow graphs into transfer functions. That's what it does. So it gives you a guideline from going from signal flow graphs to transfer functions. 
So these different representations give you different ideas about what the system is doing or the behavior of the system. So looking at the system in these different perspectives will give you clearer ideas of how to analyze the system or how to design control systems down the line. So I'm going to represent these set of equations or this equation in terms of a signal flow graph. So what is a signal flow graph? I'm going to have individual components from the state space equation and I'm going to represent it as a graph where I talk about the relationship between each elements. So this is one representation. We will start with a representation in terms of signal flow graph. I'm going to start with the input. Obviously, the input is what, is what we are going to be given to the system. What is going to be given to the system? So let me mark this as x1 dot, this here as x1 this here this will become more clear so i'm just marking nodes in the signal flow graph basically this will become more clear as i make the connections so bear with me for a second while i finish drawing this so and then here i'm going to have the finally output that's what i want i need to i need to have a way to represent my system that it takes me from input u to output y that's what i need and i have two states in the middle for the system right so what I'm going to do is start with the input and I'm going to look at how x1 dot is generated. So x1 dot is generated using x1, x2 and u. So I will have connections from all of these guys. But before I even go there, I can make simple connections that I already are know tr are true irrespective of the system. So what have I done here? It has x1 dot, and then I have x1. x1 dot, if integrated, will give me x1. You have to remember the fact that we are dealing with the Laplace domain. So x1 dot to x1 will simply give me 1 over s. So we are going to try to go to the tra uh, transfer function representation, which is in the Laplace domain. So I'm going to stick with that representation. So 1 over s is just the integrator in the Laplace domain. It goes from x1, x1 dot to x1, and similarly, x2 dot to x2. So now, as I said, I need to know how x1 dot is generated. So it's, it's getting multiplied with uh, minus 6 over 9 times x1. So I'm going to get this guy here and make a connection backwards. So you can think of it like feedback. So x1 contributes to x1 dot. And then the gain or how much it's being multiplied by will just go on top here, minus 6 over 9. Right? And then what else? I have minus 2 over 9 x2. So I need minus 2 over 9 uh, from x2. Let me draw it over here. Minus 2 over 9. Let me make this a little clearer. This is 6 over 9. Minus 2 over 9. And then from the input, I also have a contribution, which is 1 over 9. 1 over 9. So that gives me x1 dot, right? So that is done. What about x2 dot? x2 dot has x1, x2, but no contribution from u. So I have to take care of these two guys. In terms of x1, I get 2 over 3. So I can do from x2 I could do 2 over 3. Sorry, that would be minus 1 over 3. That's my bad. Minus 1 over 3. From x1, it's 2 over 3. So this line right here is going to be 2 over 3. Let me make sure this is clear. So this is minus 1 over 3. OK, and then I don't have anything from the input, so I'm done. But what about my output? It has 2 over 3 times x1. 2 or 3 times x2. So I need I'm going to make this dummy node here which will become quite clear why. It has a contribution of 2 or 3 but I don't just have x2 directly connected to y I also need to add x uh, uh, basically x1's contribution too. So I am going to go with 2 over 3 from x1, so right here, 2 over 3, right? 
So what I've done is basically make the connections based upon how they're related. And these lines will have the gains written on top of them. So, and then the directions will specify how the signal is traveling. So if you take this guy, for example, x1 is being multiplied by minus 6 over 9, and it, it is going to contribute to x1 dot. And for example, let's take this guy. x1 is being multiplied by 2 over 3, and it's contributing to this node, which is going to ultimately end up with y. And this is just one. After you add these two signals, it is just going to go to the output. So we have completely represented the system, which was given to us in state space equations, into what is called the signal flow graph. OK, so we have run out of time, but we have represented the state space equations in terms of the signal flow graph. To find out how to go from here to transfer function using what is called this Mason's rule, please click on this link right over here.